Okay, so just a little bit of background. Um, we're a small school. We have um, approximately 190 students on any given day. Uh, at the moment, we have 109 boys and 81 girls. Um, and just quietly, uh, we'll probably have a few more boys and girls in, again next year. So this is um, having a little bit of a uh, impact on our classroom management and uh, playground management, which um, we were fairly confident last year that um, we didn't need to look at behaviour management, but that'll be uh, on the agenda fairly soon. Um, we had the highest SFO in the Whittlesea network, 74% uh, EMA, 60% uh, ESL, and 15% of those are um, refugee students, largely from Africa, with, of course, little um, perhaps even no or interrupted schooling. So it's, um, that can be a, a fairly difficult cohort at times. 31 language groups, thankfully one of them's English. And um, we have quite a few children when they come to school, they've had very little preschool or kinder experience. Um, we're located on High Street. Uh, if you can get off the train at Thomastown Station if you want to come and visit us. Um, and we have a fairly transient population as well, which is impacting on our data. I think we have um, 14, 15 of our 33 grade six students that were with us in prep. Okay, and some of them, some of them, some of them, even those 14 have been in and out. So they've been gone for a year or so, come back again. And we also have um, large numbers. Um, of course, go back overseas to visit families, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so our goals. Click. Oh, um, our goals were to improve student learning outcomes in literacy. I'm going to speak really quickly now because I'm aware of the time. I've got heaps here. Change teacher practice. Um, we want children to be able to independently apply a range of literacy strategies. Um, when I talk about improving student outcomes, we're aiming for that 15% that. Um, Region suggested might be um, appropriate. Um, in terms of changing teacher practice, we're working on building a group knowledge in terms of literacy understanding, um, how to teach literacy, and also effective literacy learning strategies. Uh, we want to embed the learning strategies in teaching and in the children's learning. And we want to use, we want the children to be able to use the strategies automatically, as everybody does. So we're, we've, we feel as though they're fairly well embedded now, but we're moving towards that automisation process. So we've, the, the kids know what they are, they're very good at using them, they're good at saying how they use them and what they're going to do, but we, we're not convinced that they're um, entirely automatic across a range of texts and genres, etc. And of course, we want to use the data more effectively, not that we haven't been using the data, but we want to use it in different ways um, to in inform our teaching, and we'll speak about that a little bit further. Okay, our program in 2008 was pretty much the same as everybody else's. Um, we introduced the, uh, the reading process to begin with and had uh, a lot of discussion about what actually it was, what it entailed, um, just to make sure we're all on the same page with that. We were, we were very careful about how we introduced the um, HRLTPs. Um, we wanted to give people time to digest the information, so we actually had a, a very specific in, uh, implementation plan and, and we, uh, we stuck to it um, for the whole year. And I think um, it benefited our teachers and our children doing it that way. We also needed to allow time for Carolyn and I to practice in our classrooms. Carolyn's in the 5-6. Um, I don't have a classroom, but one of the grade one, two teachers very kindly lent me her grade for the year. So last year I was in her room for all of the literacy, uh, literacy sessions. And um, so virtually they were mine for the year. So that was pretty good. I think they've turned out okay too. Um, so what we did was we introduced the, um, the strategies one at a time. We gave, it might have taken one or two curriculum sessions, we gave teachers a chance to um, trial them in their classrooms, trial some of the strategies. Uh, we brought people back again. We always did this as um, a whole staff. We're on, as we're only small, we only had the nine grades, so we would all come back, um, share our experiences, um, 
and then teachers were expected to take us through what they'd been doing with the kids. So they, they took us through their lesson goal, um, their text selection, um, their teaching plan, anything that was um, they found um, worked for them or perhaps didn't work and shared that, um, reflections and of course where to move on from there. Alongside this, Carol and I also began modelling lessons and strategies in the classrooms. So um, first of all, we did it in our own classrooms and people came and watched us teach with our children and then we moved it into, we moved into their classrooms and modelled with their children after they'd had time at working with the kids as well, with their own children. Um, built into the implementation plan were regular revision sessions. So an opportunity to um, revisit and explore the strategies further and um, also to revisit the expectations of uh, we as the learning leaders, um, the teachers and the, the students. Okay, and, and just to check in with people how everything was going and make sure that they were feeling fine about um, what was being done so far. We introduced an implementation document uh, for each strategy where the goals were fairly explicit and the expectations for, for um, as I said, for the learning leaders, the teachers and the children were um, quite clearly outlined. So it was in terms of how we would um, incorporate the strategies and it did include what we expected the children to be able to do. So we did expect that they'd be able to talk about it even at this stage. Now we've got a couple of slides here just so you believe this really happened. That's us hard at work. That was us hard at work. I oh, yeah, we're not there. No, no, we haven't got the one of us hard at work. Oh, here it is. <laughs> we saw that. Oh, here we are. Oh, oh. Um, there's just a couple of examples. This was um, just a getting knowledge ready activity. As you can see, there's um, some areas down there, questions the text might answer vocab we might encounter, information that might be in the text, uh, information we already know. And of course we used, as everyone did, we used the um, various cue cards, etc, etc. This is one that we use in the prep one room in terms of visualisation. And this is just an example of summarising that the grade three fours did uh, using a note taking wheel and then using gist, using the gist. So, also last year, after we'd introduced the strategies, and it didn't, we still hadn't finished at the beginning of this year, we still had some, we still had to look at um, saying questions the text answered, and I, as I said, it was a very, very slow process to let things settle. Um, at the beginning of term for last year, we had a chat uh, um, with our principal, which comprised our um, school improvement group, with Carolyn and myself, and we decided that we needed to um, open up staff to the idea of not just having listening to us, but also watching each other. They were ready, we thought. So we didn't tell them what they were going to do. We had a discussion at, at staff level and um, we very cunningly put two models to them, the Japanese lesson study model or the literacy walk model. Are you going to talk about that, Carolyn? Yes, you are. 